All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, we had a little bit of technical issues going on on a Friday night at Rabble TV, folks. Um, welcome to the show. How's everybody doing on a Friday night? Kicking in early. I just wanted to get uh, a little bit early start tonight. I've got a lot to cover. And, uh, you know, then I think I'm going to end up jumping over to uh, Rabble TV, right here at Rabble TV, actually. And then going over to uh, Ustream, I think uh, take about a half an hour break, set up, go uh, jump over to uh, that Ustream TV producer as I get ready for the weekend. Uh, I'll probably be on there uh, sometime in the, in the mid-afternoon. I'll post it on my Facebook, Twitter. And uh, also, I'm going to be doing a very early, early, early show in the morning, uh, about 7 o'clock service. So uh, you want to wake up early, get your coffee, get set up and ready to go for that. Uh, either 6 or 7, I'll post it. Uh, it depends on when my alarm works. So, uh, all right, welcome to Life Grace Ministries. Uh, Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here live on the net, on the air. Uh, giving you that word that we need so much because we need a savior, folks. I'm telling you, uh, I'm so uh, blessed and grateful and uh, happy that uh, as I have to go off the off the side here as I get all my notes. Uh, that figures I everything fell over. I was uh, doing some more notes um, earlier. And uh, I lost all my uh, bookmarks as they dumped off the side of the table here. So, uh, now, like I said, folks, I got a lot to cover, uh, a lot going on. Life Grace Ministries back on the net, on the air, uh, up in the upper room, in the upper hill. As I look out my window, uh, it's kind of been a balmy, uh, rainy, kind of a off and on cool weather, definitely changing into that fall as we are into September already. Pretty crazy. Already uh, getting towards uh, hit towards the winter here in a few months or a couple of months here. Um, so you want to buckle up and uh, cover up. Get that coffee, your mud, your cowboy cola, your cocoa, all that uh, good stuff. Keep warm in the Word of God. Amen. So, uh, you know how we roll, you know what we do, you know how we start off, you get your notebook, tablets, your pens, coffee, Bible, that great big cup of love that we need so much in uh, a desperate, uh, desperate times. So, but we don't got to be desperate, folks. We, uh, we are in the Word as um, it is given to us. So, uh, I'll be reading out of the KJV, that is the King James Version so grab your easy chairs, grab your uh, all your stuff that you need. You know how we roll. You can listen to the archives, check it out. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Got a lot going on, like I said. Got a lot to cover. Um, as by, I uh, I lost my uh, like these little bookmarks I had set up. Um, so that's what, uh, folks, that's what you see me grabbing um, as I'm trying to get everything or I had everything organized. We worked on this for the last 30 minutes um, and uh, tested the lights, tested the uh, mixer, monitors. Uh, I got the, the cameras working, the monitors working good. It shut off on me for about 30 seconds, maybe 10 seconds or something like that, and then I had to just reboot it and restart it. So I don't know what's going on with the... Uh, the Wi-Fi internet connection, but you know what, folks, if I have to, I'll do it on my, uh, I can do, actually do the podcast off my tablet, so it probably ain't going to be any difference without Wi-Fi, I won't have it anyway, so there we go. All right, there we go, hitting that buzzer, it's uh, time to rabble, round one, with the word of God, amen, getting that coffee going. Um... All right, so like I said, folks, I got a lot to cover. A lot of good news gospel on a Friday night, early show, 7 o'clock. Um, just had so much to cover and so much to uh, talk about. And uh, so I kind of wanted to get uh, a little bit early start, folks. As, um, you know, as uh, I'm, like I said, I'm going to take about a half an hour break to kind of regroup as I go in. 
uh, to the book of Acts. Now on uh, Ustream, I'm going to start another uh, another series or another uh, some some more preaching and teaching. Uh, as I go into the book of Acts, I, I will shift it again from, uh, I was going to go touch over uh, Revelations, and then I got shifted over to, to uh, Genesis. Then, as I was praying and meditating, uh, I was shifted over to, uh, I was shifted over to um, uh, Acts, the book of Acts. So we're going to be reading out of the King James Version. Which is amazing. I, I'm just blown away. It's it's absolutely, um, absolutely an awesome uh, version, and I'm learning more and more. The more I read out of it, the more, the more I get, and, and the more I study and meditate. I've been watching uh, through some YouTube videos on there uh, with the differences between uh, the differences between the uh, King James and uh, the NIV, all that stuff. Uh, read it for yourself, folks. Don't let, uh, you know, that's great advice, as my just per, my personal opinion. Um, it's good advice listening and hearing, but take the word from God and uh, kind of decipher through it yourself. Now, I, I've always been, like most of my life, I've already, already gone through King James or the James, NKGV. Uh, a lot of the King James, but like I said, folks, there's a lot of these and that is the original purest form of the Bible scriptures. And so, you know, you just got to decipher it through yourself. But I, I, I have the Amplified, I have the uh, New King James Version, the KJV now, the Amplified, the NIV, the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons. Um, you know, I've read through the Koran, and it, folks, it's just read it for yourself. And, uh, you know, there's a lot taken out. There is some, a lot of, a lot of scriptures taken out. But, um, you know, just, uh, just read it for yourself, folks. Get your, get your good ideas. Uh, you know, as it comes from the Word of God, folks, you know, there, there's going to be people out there that are going to pick stuff apart. Um, you know, and it's okay. Uh, we love them anyway. We pray for them. Um, so uh, there you go, a little bit of rabbling, talking about the differences uh, in the scriptures. But right now, like I said, I'm going to switch gears, uh, shift gears a little bit. I'm going to go through the uh, King James Version, the Red Letter uh, Blood of Christ edition and version, folks. i uh, grateful for everybody here. Hit me up with a like on uh, YouTube. Subscribe. And uh, let me know where you're at, what's going on with you, because I'll pray. You know, you can hit me up on the Skype, uh, lifegraceministry60 at gmail.com. Uh, also, Rabble, The Power 3, Rabble TV, Ustream TV, and YouTube, Life Grace Ministries on the net as I upload these shows uh, directly right after I'm done. Uh, I upload them and uh, throw them up on the YouTube site. Folks, you know, it's, it's a kind of a work in progress. Uh, there's no, back, there's no uh, like backdrop, all that script stuff. I'm reading out of the best script of all, out of the greatest script we were freely given by God's grace, um, the Bible. And, uh, you know, and some scriptures, some side notes that I've been digging up and I found really cool a lot of good information out folks so i hope this touches somebody I hope you get the, some kind of a confirmation or message through this you know um i'm just reading folks i'm just going through by what i'm give, been given so uh you know judge don't judge judge i don't know folks i'm just preaching the word, word here i'm just giving the word out um you know so uh i hope uh hope everybody's uh, having a good friday night Kicking back, listening to the Word of God. Amen. All right. There we go. Getting that buzzer going. It is time to get into the Word, folks. I just found that bell, so I just thought I'd throw that in there. Hopefully you can hear that okay. Uh, as we are in a battlefield, we are in a faith battle. Uh, I'll be touching bases on that a little bit here, too. Um, all right. Well, I got some good prayers for you. So let's get these glasses on, and let's hear the Word. All right, 
So, uh, so the prayers here, and I just found this little book too. It's pretty cool. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, smashes the enemy in the greatness of your majesty. You overthrow those who rise against you, and you unleash your blazing fury. It consumes them like straw. Exodus 15, 6. Already in the word, folks. Good news. You created everything. Let all that I am, that I am, praise the Lord, O oh God, my, uh, my God. How great you are. You are uh, robed with honor and majesty. You are dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. And you make the, the clouds your chariot. You ride upon the wings of the wind. The winds are your messengers. Flames of fire are your servants. You place the world on its foundation so it would never be moved. You clothe the earth with floods of water water that covered even the mountains at your command the water fled at the sound of your thunder it hurried away mountains rose and valleys sank in the levels you decreed then you set a firm boundary for the seas so that they would never again cover the earth and you make springs pour water into the ravines so streams gush down from the mountains you send rain on the mountains from your heavenly home, and you fill the earth with the fruit of your labor. You cause grass to grow for the livestock and plants for people to use, and you allow them to produce food from the earth, wine to make them glad, olive oil to soothe their skin, and bread to give them strength, as you are the bread of life. Amen. You made the moon to mark the seasons, to mark the season, there we go, and the sun knows when to set. You send the darkness and it becomes night when all the forest animals prowl about. Oh Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom, you have made them all. That's why that is Psalms, folks, 104, 1 through 10, 13, 15, 19 through 20 and 24. No one can measure your greatness. I will exalt you, my God and King. My God and King, not cod. We don't want fish. We're not, we're not, we are fishers of men, amen. But this is my God and my King. And raise and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord, and you are most worthy of praise. No one can measure your greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness and everyone will share the story of your wonderful gladness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. Psalm 145, 1 through 7, amen. Nothing is too hard for you. O oh, sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and your strong hand and powerful arm. Uh, by your strong hand and your powerful arm, nothing is too hard for you. You show unfailing love to thousands, but you also bring the consequences of one generation's sin upon the next and you are a great and powerful god the lord of heaven's armies you have all wisdom and do great and mighty miracles and you see the conduct of all people and you give give them what they deserve you perform miracle miraculous signs and wonders in the land of egypt things still remember to this day and you have continued great miracles in Israel and all around the world, and you have made your name famous to this day. Jeremiah 32, 17, and 20. Amen, folks. So there you go. That's just a few. Um, that is just a few, uh, a few prayers that I actually got 
Um, as I'm shifting over uh, my glasses, my other glass uh, glasses that I had actually broke, so I'm kind of going uh, going on these other ones, and uh, they're a little crooked. Um, so I'm try I was trying to work on these off and on all day. Um, unfortunately, um, they have completely twisted. The glass has fallen out. And uh, always something, folks. Always uh, always got something. Uh, let's see if I can see with these. There we go. A little bit better. A little bit different. Uh, so I can kind of see a little bit. I love the other ones, though. Uh, it's from a great friend over there. So I uh, appreciate that. Uh, you have sent us a mighty savior amen praise the lord the god of israel because he has visited and redeemed his people you have sent us a mighty savior from the royal line of your servant david just as you promised through your holy prophets long ago we have been rescued from our enemies so we can serve god without fear in holiness and righteousness for as long as we live luke 1 68 70 74 and 75. Who is like you? Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders. Exodus 15, 11. You rescued me. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord for thou. For though I was poor and needy, you rescued me from my oppressors. Jeremiah 20, 13. All glory to the only wise God. All glory to the only wise God through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Romans 16, 27. You reign. Praise the Lord. Salvation and the glory to power belong to our God. Praise the Lord for the Lord our God. The Almighty reigns. Revelations 19, 1 and 6. All right, folks. Well, that is just a few, just a few, just giving you a little, a little taste of uh, of a few little prayers that I got rolling on. Uh, what a great time to be alive. God is bringing in the greatest harvest around the world in all history. And Jesus commands us in, t in Matthew 9.38, to pray to the Lord of the harvest that we that he would send out laborers into the harvest. As evangelists, preachers, ministers, uh, and pastors, we want to labor in the harvest fields to see people come to Christ and to encourage and equip other laborers uh, to go reach the least, the, <clears throat> the last, and the lost of this world. Amen. Join me in praying that God will save souls across the nation and throughout all the nations of this world and bring people into his kingdom through the work of his called and anointed evangelists. Please pray for them and their families and let us know how we can help you. Let me know, let us know how we can help you. Uh, hey man, that's just a little, little intro of good news here. Um, like I said, folks, I got so much, my God, I got so much stuff here, uh, for your healing and your, um, now the devil comes in there to try to get me and there it goes again. All right. Well, I told you he's got to wake up pretty early in the morning. Um, <laughs> It's just so funny because he, he's always trying to get in there uh, and uh, trying to mess with me. And I, it's just funny how um, what he tries to do and, uh, you know, it just, it just amazes me that uh, he is trying to get in there and trying to uh, shut this down. Um, it ain't going to happen. I, I'm not going nowhere. I have uh, direct marching orders from God to uh, continue on, keep this rolling, and uh, just not give up. I, I've been battered, attacked, uh, martyred, you know, all this other stuff. I've been just 
it's just a continual. If you're strong in the Lord, the the uh, the attacks usually happen. And so, um, hopefully, I won't lose those. I'll put those down there. There we go. Um, so you know, like I said, if you're in the battlefield, let me touch on this real quick here. As I just got uh, shifted again. Um, as you're in the battlefield, folks, as a Bible-believing, God-believing, fearing uh, Christian, uh, you're going to be attacked. There's no doubt about it. Jesus was attacked. His disciples were attacked. Uh, anybody that followed and believed in God, uh, we're in the battlefield, folks. It's a faith battle. And, uh, you know, we have to stand strong in the wiles of the devil against him and not be swayed. Um, and so, as I found more, uh, more of my other little stuff here, that's funny, this stuff's all over the place. Um, as we, you know, we got to stand strong in that and uh, not get swayed because uh, we, you know, this is, uh, this is tough times, folks. And we've got a Savior, we got God, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, as everything's just going on, uh, as I'm looking in the camera, so this is going to be funny, folks. Uh, I hope that, uh, you know, I, my, uh, my necklace is going all over the place and then my collar turns up. And uh, so every time I try to adjust it, it looks, it's going to look a little weird. Anyway, there we go. So what we were talking about is that, you know, stand strong and uh, stand fast in that word. Don't, uh, don't drift off. Don't change. Don't um, let that devil get in you and on you and all that stuff. You know what I'm going with that, folks. Um, we can't, uh, we can't let him sway or persuade any of us. We've got to stand strong in, in, in the God, in God, in the Lord, all men. All right. So work together to fulfill God's call and reach the nation of the good news gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace is what God does and faith is what we do. Amen. Uh, 1 John 4, 121, Beloved, do not put faith in every spirit, but prove the spirits to discover whether they proceed from, from, for many false prophets have gone forth into the world. Um, and just some little side notes, random side notes. Uh, let's see, Romans 10, 12, For whoever so ever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be forgiven, Healed, delivered, and prospered, amen. That's some good stuff. Always good, you know, uh, just sitting back, listening to the word. Uh, as I am uh, trying to figure out how this, uh, this there's a uh, message board on uh, on my, on the, uh, the Rabble TV here. So I'm trying to figure out... Um, exactly how to do that but i am uh live right now so i'm just checking um also you can hit up media the uh twitter um as i get over to ustream tv there is actually a live connection that you can actually uh go on to and look at and stuff like that so i'll be doing that then if you can join me over there Directly, uh, I gotta make sure to watch the timing. Um, I think about 9:30 I'll be on there, so uh, I'm gonna be uh, kind of glancing at my my left here, uh, just to kind of keep track of the time, um, as I can see it on my my laptop here. But I'll be paying attention to that so I don't drift. Uh, Ephesians 4:1. Walk in a manner worthy of calling of the calling with which you have been called. Amen. So if your faith is dependent on an outcome, then it's only a matter of time before you lose it. Uh, and sometimes God's blessings are not in what he gives, but in what he takes away. He knows best. Trust him. It's good stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to do that again. I uh, won't be reading that. Uh, I am going to be doing a series here. I'll get to that in a minute here. 
John 4.24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in truth. Amen. John 3.15.17, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Amen. And lean not unto your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. Ah, that's some good news. Just uh, passing this, uh, this information, this is good news. As uh, I'm shepherding the flock with the truth, uh, and, and then I got uh, I got a little bit extra little side notes here. Um, all right. Well, that was my deal on the fivefold ministry. As I'm breaking all that down, I'm kind of going over this again. Um, and uh, let's see. Talking about, and now I'm going to be doing this series here. Uh, it's pretty cool, actually. It's leading in to uh, this one. Uh, Ephesians 4, 1 uh, through 16, folks. Grab your note. Man, I've told you, folks, i got a lot of information, a lot of good news out there for you. Um, and it says, and it reads, saints, friends, family, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature, of the fulfillment or fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness, and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. From the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly. And it makes the body grow so that it builds up in love. Ah, that's good news. All right. Peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord and Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Now, I'm going to be doing this. I think I touched on a little bit. Um, it is the uh, repentance, uh, and that would be the, um, the messages for the church. Um, so I did kind of briefly use a couple, uh, a couple little uh, tidbits out of it, little bit pieces of information. But uh, I'll be going through the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole sermon um, and I just, like I said, folks, I just touched a little tiny bit on it. I just gave a little sample of what, what the whole thing is about. It's pretty cool. Judgment comes on the non-repentant. In the days of Jesus, the majority of the Israelites would not repent. They would not yield to the way of the Holy Spirit. Stephen described them as being stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. So, folks, with that, like I said, um, I'm going to be basically kind of touching back over this um, and uh, going back over this more in depth um, as it is, uh, it's pretty, pretty intense. There's a lot of stuff in it, a lot of information. And so I am just holding off for a minute till the Holy Spirit directs me to this. 
Um, and, you know, so there's, like I said, folks, uh, when I read this, when I saw this, I went back over this again. My God, is it some eye-opening information. Um, uh, it's really, really good. There's a lot going on in it and a lot to uh, go over in detail and stuff. Uh, as we read in Revelations 21-22, all things made new in the New Jerusalem, the seven bowls, the glory of the New Jerusalem, the river of life, the time is near, and Jesus testifies to the churches, uh, the warning, and I came quickly. Uh, and then we also went over and discussed uh, the five, the, uh, the, well, it wouldn't be five. Um, it would be the fruits of of the spirit as i was asked which one or which uh which ones i've got or shown or, or which ones that are in me well love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness now this last one the nine uh self-control yeah we all got to work on that uh, guilty uh, you know i am working on that but we all have to take steps to do that not just one person so as um as i will get into that too whoa we got lightning and thunder out there folks so hopefully i won't lose you uh, as the internet might go uh off that would be interesting um, and he asked them in Acts 19 and 2, and he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed on Jesus as the Christ? And they said, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Uh, Amen. All right. So, in purity, understanding, patience, kindness, and the Holy Spirit, and sincere love, and truthful speech, and in the power of God with weapons and righteousness, in the right hand, in the left, in 2 Corinthians 6, 6, 7. Uh, all right. Uh, 2 Peter 15, or 1, 5 through 7, for this way, a very reason, make every effort to add your faith goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance uh, godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love uh, all right so we're just taking notes here again Yeah, it looks like we, uh, we've got some lightning and thunder going on. Uh, so I need, to, uh, I need to just go back over this. Uh, as I get this Twitter message out, um, holy cow, we have, uh, we have some lightning and thunder. Uh, so I'm just kind of getting this message out here. Um, um, well, that's what I get, so I'm, I'm uh, let's see if I can do this and multitask here. Is I, uh, all right. All right, so just getting a message out on Twitter about the, uh, Thunder. It was pretty loud, actually. Heard it. Uh, heard it. Uh, very loud. Very noisy. Ah, uh, praying to God. He knows what's best. He wants to get this message out as we go in. Like I said, that's why I started a little bit early because it's been raining off and on all night the last couple nights here. Kind of just not too bad, but not you know just a little bit of spots here. Uh, but I definitely. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Well, there you go, folks. I took a big drink of coffee, and it uh, took me right out, so sorry about that. Uh, man, oh man, I took a, I was listening to the thunder, as I can hear it uh, in the background, <coughs> and I uh, took a big swig of coffee, 
and uh, it just, uh, man, oh man, it just took me right out. So, um, you know, there we go. So that's what happens live when you're on the air. Can't shut it off. Can't move. Can't uh, can't maneuver around. So I might try to edit that. That was about 35 and a half seconds or something like that. So uh, that was not good. So uh, apologies, folks, uh, to that. And uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, it won't be too bad. But uh, I'll have to put something in there because that was not good. And uh, yeah, so. All right, well, like I said, folks, this is live, so I'm just trying to get this word out, but I took a big swig of that coffee, and uh, pretty uh, pretty bad. I'm just listening. Uh, the thunder is uh, getting uh, more and more closer, so hopefully uh, I won't lose uh, power here. I won't lose Wi-Fi. Um, that would not be good. All right, well, let's try to continue as uh, I got that cop out of me. Uh, that was pretty bad, folks. So if you hear this and if you listen to this and you're going to hear this thing, I, uh, like I said, folks, I just uh, took a big swig of coffee and uh, choked up. So uh, that's what happens live. All right, let's go on with uh, Hebrews 7, 24, 25. And Jesus is ever interceding on our behalf that alone should embolden us to hold fast to our confession of faith in him and we can have immovable and unshakable confidence that he may that he will not may he will steady us and strengthen us and calm every storm he will be our anchor our steadfast hope on the rolling tides and the crashing waves and he will see us safely through the storm and guides us to our destination. Um, so, like I said, folks, I'm just kicking this word out. I, God, devil, he can get behind me saying, you ain't going to get anywhere. You're not going to shut this down. This message will get out. It is getting out. And uh, I'm not going to worry about uh, the, uh, the storm here because we have our anchor. God's word will not fail us. Um... It will not, and uh, as I'm just writing notes down here, folks. Uh, it is important for us to realize that after we've prayed an apparent delay in the answer uh, for not hearing God's voice right away doesn't mean that God hasn't heard us. It doesn't mean that help isn't on the way. First John 5, 14 through 15, uh, <clears throat> it says... Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. And God's word will not fail us. If we'll refuse to give up, he'll uh, keep standing on the rock of God's word. It is as sure a word and it won't let you down. Uh, man, there we go, folks. Kicking in some word. All right, so hopefully, okay, no more choke, no more coughing. There we go. Got to hear the, uh, got to hear the, hear the angels as, uh, as they are, uh, getting things done. All right, well, I'm going to briefly touch on the battlefield. I'll just do the first page of it. Uh, throw some notes at you. I'll be throwing uh, a few little anecdotes, a few little scriptures. Um, pretty amazing, uh, amazing things, uh, amazing information that I've got. All right, so dealing with the devil and an oncoming in his hin overcoming his hindrances to the manifestation of what God has already provided is popular is popularly called or popularly called spiritual warfare i'm going to get this word out one way or the other the devil's trying to choke me up and get me off this this uh get me off my post but uh he's got to go 
Amen. Ah, uh, come on, Holy Ghost. I know you're there. I know you're watching. I know you're in control. Um, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth in the Holy Ghost and with power, with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. That's Acts 10.38. Uh, God is a spirit from the spiritual world. With God's word, it is life. Overall, it has been good for Christians to recognize the fact that Satan exists and that his demonic powers are active today. However, in the process, much of the body of Christ has swung from ignorance to a very weird extreme. Uh, man. Uh, Satan is the defeated foe. The only reason he is able to do anything is because of our own ignorance, unbelief, and fears. Fact, folks, that's the truth and true. Uh, the only reason he is able to do anything against us is because of our own ignorance, unbelief, and fear. As I'm just getting notes here. All right, uh, although the body of Christ today has come to an awareness of the devil's existence, it has remained, for the most part, functionally ignorant of Satan's true devices. The battle is between you and your ears. Um, yep, that's true. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. But put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against the powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we go right into Ephesians 6, 10, and 12, folks. So you can go ahead and read that for yourself. Uh, right, so we're coming into our first hour amazing we are in a battle but it's not out there in heavenly places we are fighting demonic powers and they do exist in heavenly places but the battlefield place of engagement is in our minds the soul and the flesh are the same all satan can do is try to deceive you through the wiles kindness craftiness uh and the lies uh, and then use the very power you surrender to him against you. The devil's goal is to keep you ignorant of the truth and believing his lies. Now that is a key part right there, folks. Check that out. Read it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's true. I'm, I'm preaching the truth, folks. Uh, say what you will about me. Call me names. Call me whatever you like. But you know what? The truth will set you free. I'm going to go back over those two key points. All Satan can do is try to deceive you through uh, the wiles, the cunningness, the craftiness, and his lies. And then use the very power you surrender to him against you. The devil's goal is to keep you ignorant of the truth and believe his lies and he comes in all kinds of forms folks so you know like i said folks you can take it or leave it don't don't cut it apart but that's the truth and you can listen to that check that out uh james 4 7 god resists the proud and gives grace to the humble therefore submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you uh, right there in the word, in the scriptures, he will flee from you. And now I'm going to read that again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put this right out on the devil right now. Uh, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The devil will flee from you, folks. There we go, saints. Friends, family, uh, I fear by the names or test by the names as the serpent beguiled Eve through the subtly so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ 2 Corinthians 11 3 and it emphasizes mind 
Satan comes against us by trying to corrupt our minds from the simplicity that is in Christ. And Satan chooses the serpent, the craftiest uh, animal on the face of the earth, to come against Eve because he knew he had absolutely no power to force or intimidate Adam or Eve into anything because the snake was subtle, crafty, subtle, sneaky, uh, deceptive. And, uh, and, and as we build in strength in God, in, in our Father, uh, we come against that. We, we, we come up against that um, in all kinds of forms, folks. You gotta be really, you know, discernment I use your discernment and um, you know stand on that word as that snake, as that serpent uh, tries to come up against us and, and uh, deceive us. Um, you know, I, and I like I said, folks, I've been attacked. I've been verbally attacked. I've been uh, sent some hate mail and. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing God can't handle. You know, you got to look in the mirror when you speak those words. You got to look in the mirror uh, before you say them. Think it through before you speak those words, and uh, you know, just give yourself a time out. Think about it. Calm down. Look at it, and uh, before you spit out that toxic poison, you gotta, you gotta stop and, and pray to God over it and not get into the flesh. And that reaction, that anger reaction, is getting into the flesh regardless of how you want to call it or split it or whatever. But it is, uh, you know, we need to stand strong and stand firm in that word of God. Amen. So uh, there you go. Some more uh, rabbling. Uh, is that thunder still going on around me? I can hear it. Uh, he had to deceive them instead. If Satan hadn't challenged the word and gotten them to question and second guess it, his redemption would have gone nowhere. Satan tempted Adam and Eve with something they already had. And Satan loves to hinder people from coming to the Lord, but his only power, and I reiterated on this, folks, his only power is deception and lies. Uh, if Satan was really a, as powerful as he claims to be, then he would have kept you from receiving salvation. Amen. All right. Satan can't stop you from doing anything. Satan can't do anything to you without your consent and cooperation. So if you cooperate with the devil, you're going to get the devil. If you resist the devil, stand strong and stand firm in that word, uh, then uh, he will protect you and watch over you. Amen. So those of us that think they are in God, uh, that is his deception using you, uh, going through you and using you uh, to deceive others. So if Satan hadn't challenged the word and gotten him to question and second guess it, his temptation would have gone nowhere. Satan loves to hinder people from coming to the Lord, but his only power is deception and lies. And if Satan were really a power, as powerful as he claims to be, then he would have kept you from receiving salvation. And Satan can't stop you from doing anything. Satan can't do anything to you without your consent and cooperation. The devil will condemn you over what you don't have and try to keep you focused on just the physical realm. By the day is in the spirit, you already have everything in the physical realm. They, the key to seeing manifest in your life would have been the spirit of believing and acknowledging it, that the communication of the faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus in Philemon uh, 1 6. The way you get to your get your faith to work is by starting to acknowledge the good things in you in Christ. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. In Romans 7 18. Alright. 
To live in victory, you need to be focused on who you are in Christ. Satan specifically targets your understanding and acknowledging of who you are and what you have in Christ. Adam and Eve threw it all away, and because a talking snake convinced them that they didn't have enough. Uh, right. If you have been born again, you do have everything, and you are complete in Christ. Amen. All right. That is a key verse right there. Um, that is key. If you have been born again, truly, truly saved and born again, and not just pretending, not just faking it, not just saying, you know, because it's the fashion of the day, you do have everything. You are complete in Christ. Amen. Colossians 2.10. The battle against the devil is waged in your thoughts. That's why God's word is so essential. Satan's only power is deception, but the truth is the antidote to deception. Amen. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John 8, 32. Uh, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself, uh, against the knowledge of God and bringing him into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Be reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. Notice how our warfare is against thoughts, imagination, strongholds, and the knowledge that comes against the word of God. These are all processes of our minds, our thoughts. Although he has been beaten, the devil walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, and using and going through others to deceive us. Um, so that, that folks, that's what they said things. We need to be very careful about that and, uh, you know, look at that very thoroughly uh, with wise eyes. Uh, notice how our warfare is against thoughts, imagination, and strongholds. And I'm going to go back over this again and repeat it. Knowledge, it comes against the Word of God. There are saints, there are, there are Christians born again, called themselves born again, that use that, uh, use that deception against us. Although he has been beaten, the devil walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, apart from the power you give him through believing his lies, Satan can't steal anything from you uh, as you give, your, give him an inroad uh, into that darkness, into that hiding, into that secret space. He, uh, he uses that against you. Uh, I'm right here, so I'm going over this. Uh, apart from the power he, you give him through the believing his lies, Satan can't steal nothing from you. He uses your ignorance, not knowing, your fear, and your unbelief to try to oppress and destroy you. In Acts eleven sixteen, then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen, that's good stuff. All right, just checking some notes. And all right, so that gets into that whole big mess of things here. We got the battlefield scriptures. Check this out, folks. Now grab your pens and uh, write some of these scriptures down uh, as we study um, and uh, stand in that word. John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good in healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, 
for God is was with him. Second Corinthians two eleven, list Satan should go an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Ephesians six ten through twelve. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Getting this word out. 2 Corinthians 11.3 But I fear lest be by any means as the serpent beguiles Eve through his subtly. Uh, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And I fear not. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I have no fear. 2 Corinthians, uh, let's see, I got that one. Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Yep. Philemon 1, 6, That the communication of faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Romans 7.18 For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Colossians 2.10 And ye are complete in him, which is the head of of all principality and power. And some more word. John 8.32 And ye shall know the truth. And what, friends? The truth shall set you free. Alright, got two more. 2 Corinthians 10.3 and 5 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to be pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that excellent exalt itself against the word of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, uh, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, in the battlefield, um, we will be touching and going basis of that. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to just touch bases on this real quick as I'm checking media. Looks like everything's been rolling really well here. Um, so far, the uh, the thunder has subsided, so uh, that's a good sign that maybe it's just kind of passing. Uh, let's see, as I did this one... Um, as the Holy Spirit's quickening me to uh, just touch bases on this, folks. Like I said, I, I have so much uh, so much information and uh, there's so much revelation knowledge that's going on up in this house. We know where we're at. Uh, now, I went over this. I'm going to go over this again. Philippians 2, 5, and 1. Exalt the name above all names. In the Bible times, naming a child, and I said this before, I read this, I went back over this a couple days ago here, a few weeks, or maybe it's a few days. It was a major event for a Hebrew family, and the household uh, took great pains in selecting a name, sometimes choosing one that had personal meaning for the parents. For example, of this is Leah. She chose to call her fourth child Judah, saying, This time I will praise the Lord. Amen. In Genesis 29, 35, occasionally I perceived uh, a des or desired personal personality trait 
would determine what a baby was called in Genesis 25, 26. It shows this to be the case with Jacob, one who supplements. Amen. Check that out for yourself, folks. It's right there in the Word. Frequently, the name given at birth would symbolize to others who that person was. In the ancient world, this was intentional. Even today, people subconsciously associate character traits and experiences with names. We all hope that when others hear our, ours called, they will have good things come to mind rather than a sense of dread. Mary and Joseph had a far different experience from the other Jewish parents. Instead of choosing the name themselves, an angel told them what their child would be called in Matthew 1.21. The Heavenly Father selected his son's earthly name to represent his purpose in coming. A day will come when the very mention of Jesus will cause every knee to bow. It will cause every knee to bow and every tongue to confess that he is the Lord. Uh, Philippians 2.10 The Hebrew form of Jesus it means salvation and he saves. Christ is called many things throughout the scripture. Lord Emmanuel, teacher, Messiah, but his given name tells a story. He came to save the world from sin. No wonder God gave him the name above all names. Amen. Amen, 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 folks. There you go. That's some, uh, some good, some good news, folks. All right, so I was going to go over here and do this but you know what i think what i'm going to do is uh i'm just going to get right into the uh the book of job um and uh as i'm just kind of maneuvering um and then i'll close out with this prayer of oh, god it's really good prayers in this thing it's amazing absolutely amazing all right folks we'll grab that coffee hopefully no choking now like i said it was about i don't know right into it um For some reason, uh, like I said, I just took a big gulp of it and it just choked me out. So, thank God. All right. Right here. In the King James ver Version, the, the true uh, the true Word of God. Amen. We're going to get right into uh, chapter 10. Uh, so, go ahead and grab your Bibles. Grab your... Uh, grab your Bibles. Grab your place. Grab your, uh, just sit back in your easy chair. Give yourself a time out with God because we are reading... Saints, we are reading the big book of love. It is our life. So, I'll probably just go... Maybe just cover a couple of them. Um, I'll see where we're at uh, timing-wise. As, uh, as I've got a little bit of time here, I do want to get uh, to Ustream TV tonight. So um, we'll, we will see uh, with timing where we're at with this. All right, so chapter 10, go ahead and read. Uh, my soul is weary of my life, and I will leave my complaint. Let me go up here so I can see a little better. I will leave my complaint upon myself, and I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, Do not condemn me. Shew me wherefore thou contendest with me. It is, is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of thine hands, and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Hast thou eyes of flesh, or seest thou as a man seeth? Are thy days as the days of man, are the years of man as man's days? Then thou inquirest about after mine iniquity, and I searchest after my sin. Thou knowest that I am not wicked, and there is none that can deliver out of thine hand. Um... Let's see, as we go on, uh, thou knowest that I am not wicked, and there is none that can deliver me out of thine hand. Thine hands have made me, and fashioned me together. 
round about, yet thou must dis dost destroy me. Remember, I beseech thee, that thou had made me as the clay, and wilt thou bring me into dust again? Hast that not poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese? And yeah, thou hast clothed me with the skin and flesh, and hast fenced me with bones and sinews. Uh, thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. And those things that house hid in my heart, I know that this is with thee. If I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from mine iniquity. If I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift my head? Lift up my head. I am full of confusion. Therefore, see thou mine affliction. Now, that just happened to uh, hit a nerve. I'm going to re. I'm going to go back over this again. Oh, uh, man. Uh, some good news, good news, good news. Uh, as I'm getting clarification in my. Uh, you know, folks, I've always talked about this training. Uh, the messages and everything that I've been getting and everything, uh, I've been getting all these like these messages and stuff and, and hearing God's voice. Um, and uh, so as I get more uh, more clarification, as I'm just kind of adjusting again, uh, trying to maneuver this Bible, because it is a little bit hard to read when I'm, I'm kind of pointing it down. So uh, I'm just trying to maneuver it so I can get to it better. Um, from the word, all right, so let's go into this here, folks. Let me go move, uh, see if I can maneuver this down a little bit. Um, and that's what uh, my microphone is. That's what it's kind of right in the way. I'm trying to maneuver so I can see a little bit better. Uh, so 14 again. So if I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from mine iniquity. Uh, if I be wicked, woe unto me, and if I be righteous, yet uh, will I not lift up my head? I am full of confusion, and yeah, therefore see thou mine affliction, for it increased, if it, or increaseth, thou huntest me as a fierce lion, and against thou sheweth thyself marvelous upon me. Thou renewest thy witness against me and increased thine integration upon me chances or changes and war are against me uh, wherefore that house that house brought me forth out of the womb oh that I have never given up the ghost and no eye had seen me uh, I should have seen or been as though I ba uh, I had not been. It's hard to read this. There's uh, some note, some uh, little like scratches or something in the words, so it's kind of taking some of it out. Uh, are my are not my days few? Cease then and let me alone, that I may take comfort a little before I go whence. I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. There we go. Talks about uh, talks about the, the darkness in this one. So that's why I wanted to read this. As uh, I'm just kind of marking and highlighting stuff. Um, this is why, it's like I said, folks, I was just uh, requested now. Some, I've been asked about this and asked about reading this. Um, and laid it on the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit directed me into the book of Job. So I'm going to go back over 20 again. Are not my days few? Cease then, and let me alone, and I that I may take comfort a little. Before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness is the darkness itself, and of the shadow of death, without any order, and where the light is as darkness. 
Uh, that would be talking about um, the deception, the lies of the devil. Uh, and 11 here. Then answered Zophar, the Namathite, and said, Should not the multitude of words be answered? And should a man full of talk be justified? Should thy lies make men hold their peace? And when thou mockest, shall no man make thee ashamed? Um, so let's go over this one again. Uh, pretty amazing. All right, that's just a few of them, folks. That is just a few. Uh, let's see. For thou hast said, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thine eyes. But, oh, that God would speak and open his lips against thee, and that he would shew thee the secrets of wisdom, and that they are double uh, to that which is. I know, therefore, that God existeth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty into perfection? It is as high as heaven. What canst thou do deeper than hell? What canst thou know? The measure, therefore, is longer than the earth and the broader than the sea. If he cut off and shut down, or if gathered together, then no, or then who can hinder him? Um, for he knoweth vain men, he seek with wickedness, um, and broader than the sea. If he cut off and shut up, uh, or gather him, gather together, then who can hinder him? For he knoweth vain men, the seek, seek, wick, wickedness. There we go. Told you, it's, it's a lot of stuff written on my book here, and so I'm having a kind of adjusting time trying to get through it uh, and read. Um, but we will continue. Um... Let's see, let's go back over nine. The measure, therefore, is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If you cut off and shut off, shut up, or gather together, then who can hinder him? For he knoweth vain men, and he sees wicked also. Will he not then consider it? For vain man uh, would be wise, though man be born like a wild ass's colt. I didn't put that in here. It's in Job, in the book of Job in chapter 11. Uh, if thou prepare thy heart, then stretch out thine hands towards him. If iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. For then shalt lift, thou shalt lift up thy face without spot. Yeah, thou shalt be said fast, and shall not... Fear, uh, because thou shalt forgive thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away. Um, so, as I look for my pen again, um, that's really good. Uh, I'm going to put that up on there, on that site there. So, uh, amen, 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 folks. So we're getting into the word here. For then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot, yea, they shall be steadfast and shall not fear, because they thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away. And thine uh, age shall be clearer than the, no, than the noonday. Uh, thou shalt shine forth, thou shalt be as the morning, and thou shalt be secure because there is hope. Yes. Thou shalt uh, dig about thee, and thou shalt take the rest in safety. Although thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid, yea, many shall make suit unto thee, but the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. Man, talk about some stuff here. All right, so let's go over to 12, folks. Um, and like I said, 
Um, I'll be uh, I'm gonna be jumping over to uh, UStream, uh, so I'll be continuing in the Book of Acts. Now I was shifted um, over to the Book of Acts as I continue in this word. Um, I'm gonna stay uh, in the Book of Job uh, for the UStream or you to the rabble here. Um, I'm going to be staying in this word of uh, Job uh, and reading through this. Um, and then, uh, like I said, I'll be going, jumping over on uh, on Ustream, the Ustream TV broadcasting uh, international podcast site, folks, the Power 3. Um, and uh, with time permitting, tomorrow... Uh, we'll see where I'm at, and uh, I'll be jumping back here in the morning with the morning early Sunday, early Saturday weekend message, uh, in continuing with the book of Job here. So, uh, chapter twelve reads, saints and friends, and Job answered and said, No doubt, but ye are the people, and the wisdom shall die with you. But I have understanding as well, uh, as well as you, and I am not inferior to you, yea, who knoweth. Not such things as these. I am as one mocked of his neighbor who calleth upon, calleth upon the Lord. And he answered this, uh, him, and did, and just upright. Come on, Holy Spirit, I know you're there. Uh, as, I pray on, uh, as I pray on the word to be able to speak, uh, speak clearly. Uh, amen. As, I am as one mocked of his neighbor who calleth upon the Lord. And he answered him, and just upright man is laughed to scorn. He that is ready to slip with his feet is as the lamp despised in the thought of him. That is at ease. The tabernacles of robbers prosper, and they have provoked God uh, are secure into those whose hand God bringeth abundantly. And asked now the beast, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, who knoweth not, and all these at the hand of the Lord hath wrought this, uh, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind doth not to hear try words, ears try words, and the mouth takes it, tastes his meats. With the ancient is wisdom and his length and days understanding. With him is wisdom and strength. Be half counsel and understanding. Behold, he breaketh down and he cannot build again. He shutteth up a man and there can be no opening. Behold, he withholdeth the waters and they dry up. Also he sendeth them out, and they overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom, and the deceived and the deceiver are his. He leadeth counselors away, spoiled, and maketh the judges fools. He looses the bond of kings, and girdeth their loins with a girdle. He leadeth prices away, spoiled, and overthrown, or overthroweth the mighty. He removeth away the speech of the trusty, and taketh away the understanding of the aged. Amen. And there goes my Bible. Uh, that's why I need a, a stand or something up here. Uh, he discovereth deep things out of the darkness, and bringeth out to the light of the shadow of death. He increaseth the nations and destroyeth them. He enlargeth the nations and straighten them out again. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. They grope in the dark without light and he marketh them to stagger like a drunken man. Amen. So I did go through that again. All right, we're coming up on 830. Ah, uh, what a good night to spend in the Word, folks. 
And uh, as I'm going to be jumping over here to Ustream, now I haven't been on there in about a week or two, um, I'm going to be going into the book of Acts. So I might just go another 15 minutes. I might just read one more chapter uh, from 13. And then um, I'll be, uh, be cutting this one off. Uh, I'm just going... Just going, folks, right into uh, right into the next uh, the next one. Just taking a little break here to get uh, started, um, and so as I mark my notes, um, let's see. So we are going to be going into thirteen. So um, uh, we're going to do that. We're going to go to ten through thirteen, and. Um, the next, uh, the next one tomorrow morning is going to be 14. So mark that on your calendars. I will be setting that up after I download. I have to uh, upload this. Uh, unfortunately, I did cough on this thing and choke out, so hopefully it won't be too bad. I don't know if I can edit that or not, but we'll see. Chapter 13 in the book of Job in the King James Version. Lo, my knife hath seen all this, mine ear hath heard and understood it. What ye know, the same do I. I'm going to get my note up here so I can see. Uh, I know also, and I am not inferior unto you. Surely I would speak to Almighty and a desire to reason with God. But ye are for, uh, forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. Oh, that ye may or thee would altogether hold your peace. And it should be your wisdom. Hear now my reasoning and hearken to the pleadings of my lips. Will you speak wickedly for God and talk deceitfully for him? Will ye accept his person? Will ye contend for God? Is it good that he should search you out? Or as one man mocketh another, do you so mock him? He will surely reprove you if you do secretly accept persons. Shall not his ex excellency made you afraid, and his dread fall upon you? Your remembrances are like unto ashes, your bodies to bodies of clay. Hold your peace. Let me alone that I may speak and let him or let come on me that will. Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in mine hands? Thou he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Um, as I get the notes here so I know where I'm at. Uh, Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. In him, and I will maintain my own ways before him. He also shall be my salvation. For an hypocrite shall not come before him. Hear diligently my speech and my declaration with your ears. Behold, now I have ordered my cause. I know that I shall be justified. Who is he that will plead with me? For now, if I hold my tongue, I shall give up the ghost. Hear diligently my speech and my declaration with your ears. Behold, now I have ordered my cause. I know that I shall be justified. Who is he that will plead with me now? For now, if I hold my tongue, I shall not give up the ghost. There we go. Only do not two things unto me, then... Will I not hide myself from thee? Withdraw thine hand far from me, and let not thy dread make me afraid. Then call thou, and I will answer, or let me speak and answer thou me. How many are mine iniquities and sins? Make me to know my transgression and my sin. Therefore, or wherefore, hidest thou? Thou thy face, and holdest me from thine enemy. Wilt thou break a leaf driven to and fro? And wilt thou pursue the dry stubble? For thou writest bitter things against me, and markest me to possess the iniquities of my youth. Thou puttest my feet also in the stocks, and lookest 
narrowly unto my all paths thou settest a print upon the heels of my feet and he as a rotten thing consumeth as a garden a garment that is moth eaten holy cow there is some stuff folks i'm telling you there is some stuff all right well that's uh that is gonna wrap this night up um and i will be setting like i said folks i want to be setting up another uh another podcast um as uh i'm trying to not knock over stuff here um i'm going to be going back over this again um and setting up this uh the next episode here uh, for tomorrow morning Tune in seven o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna be doing these. Uh, I might do a couple of them I'll double shot because the job is so long. There's so much more in it. Um, all right, so I'm gonna close this out, folks. I hope you had a good night. Hope you had a good time here. Um, besides my choking and which is not cool. Um, that just kind of came out of the blue as um, as I was kind of going over that and. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's not too good, um, but hopefully you can get past that and just understand uh, what's going on. That was just, uh, you know, take a big swig of coffee and have to be run through that. So, all right, folks. Well, here's our prayer. This kindness and love of God, our Savior, in Titus 4, how sweet it is to behold the Savior uh, coming with his own beloved people. There can he uh, be nothing more delightful than by the divine spirit to be led into this heart, uh, into this fertile field of delight. Let the mind for an instant consider the history of the Redeemer's love and a thousand enchanting acts of affection will suggest themselves, all of which have had for their delight the weaving of the heart into Christ and the inner twisting of the thoughts and the emotions of renewed soul, soul, not soul, soul, with the mind of Jesus. When we meditate upon his amazing love and behold the all glorious kinsmen of the church endowing her with all his ancient wealth, our souls may well faint for joy. Who is he that can endure such a weight of love? That partial sense of it which the Holy Spirit is sometimes pleased to afford. It is more than the soul can contain. How transporting must be a complete view of it. When the soul shall have understanding to discern all the Savior's gift, wisdom wherewith to estimate them, in time in which to meditate upon them, such as the world to come will afford us, we shall then commune with Jesus in a nearer manner than at present. But who can imagine the sweetness of such fellowship? It must be one of the things which have not entered into the heart of man, but which God hath prepared uh, for them that love him. Oh, to burst open the door of our Joseph's granaries, 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 I think, and see the plenty which he had stored up for us. This will overwhelm us with love. By faith we see, as in a glass darkly, the reflected image of his unbound treasures. Uh, but when we actually see the heavenly things themselves, with our own eyes, how deep will the stream of fellowship in which our soul shall bathe itself. Till then our loudest sonnets shall be reserved for our loving benefactor, Jesus Christ our Lord, whose love to us is wonderful, passing the love of women. Amen, folks. Man, oh man, that's some good words, some good messages, folks. As we... um. Like I said, folks, I'll be leaving. I'll be starting and I uh, believe what I say. We're we going to go right into chapter 14. Um, and as I'm just writing notes for the next episode uh, 
that'll be tomorrow morning uh, at uh, I believe 7 a.m. I'm going to try to get up and do an early show. Um, so uh, we will be going. We will be going there first thing in the morning, folks. Stay tuned. Get some sleep. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. And even though I was choking, like I said, folks, it was just a little thing. Uh, man, oh man, that caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so I'm going to have to go in there and see if I can edit it. All right. You guys have a good night. I'm going to I'm gonna go and uh, make sure the uh, doors are secure out here. You guys have a good night. Talk to you soon. Life Grace Ministries closing out with another night of rabble. Now, I might, like I said, I'll post this. If I have enough time tonight, if I get a chance, I will be jumping over to uh, Ustream uh, and going into the book of Acts. So grab your Bibles, take a break uh, as the word continues. And I'll be coming back on here in the morning, probably between 7 and 8 or so. Uh, I'll post it. Check out Life Grace Ministries. Uh, Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here live on the net getting that word out uh another night in the word uh, i'll be talking to you guys soon have a good night blessings and shalom uh praise yahweh yeshua uh life grace ministries rabble tv ustream tv and youtube i might be hitting a couple of them up this weekend uh getting this word out um taking it easy this weekend uh, you guys have a safe weekend. Always blessed. Uh, you know, the Lord is with you. Um, all right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for me. I'm going to refresh and uh, um, warm up my coffee uh, as the uh, cold is coming in. All right, folks, good night. Blessings. Shalom. Talk to you soon. Be back on the air. LifeGraceMinistry60 at gmail.com. Minister Preacher Rick will all you here live. Coming to you live with a word. Stay in a word. And blessings and shalom, family, saints, friends. Uh, all right. You guys have a good night. Talk to you soon. Blessings and shalom.